Good morning or afternoon, everybody. This is Dan Hussey of LAWayForecast.com bringing you the London session trading room uh, recap. Uh, let's begin with the trade we did take this morning. Uh, it was an S&P 500 short. Uh, we shorted it just about the U.S. Open, just a, you know, maybe 15 minutes before, uh, right into the open. The uh, trade setup here was we were looking for resistance overnight that would take us down into the gap fill. Uh, we have highlighted the 1762 resistance area. Um, it, of course, expands all the way through the 1764. Um, yesterday, um, we had traded longs into, and this was overnight, we had traded a full long off of our 1747 low to the 1756 high here. 50% long traded and the target just happened to be right up at 1762. Uh, so we were looking for then um, resistance on you know coupled with long targets so ideally there'd be some long profit taking there as well um, but uh, ultimately this morning and this is where the importance of this trade com comes in is that uh, Tick did something this morning I haven't seen it do, do in a long time typically in a gap up situation you you end up with a extreme reading in the tick in other words when we gap up you know we gapped in the tick up to about a thousand we opened at a thousand and we traveled about 300 uh, 300 ticks higher in the tick to 1388 high uh, we sold the tick um, just after the open right as we saw the tick start to come off here and uh, it was a 16 like I said uh, I'm sorry, 1762 quarters we sold uh, right after we got a high, the high extreme in the tick for the day. And what that signals to us is we had an extreme number of buyers at the U.S. Open. And for the first half hour of trading, in in interestingly enough, uh, for the first half hour of trading, this entire half hour where we declined in price, the tick was still hovering up and at highs. In other words, the entire time we were selling off, there was a larger than average number of buyers. So the actual participation we saw in the market was a lot of buyers that not only bought the short term top, but then continued to buy the whole way down. And that's what happens in a declining market. You get buyers on the way down and you get sellers on the way up in a rallying market. I mean, think of how many people were bearish the S&P over the last four years and look where we are uh, since the 2009 lows. Of course, it's you know kind of a 2020 hindsight idea, but it's the truth. Market sentiment is often opposite of what the market does. Anyway, we use the tick in this fashion this morning to highlight uh, an entry <coughs> point at a resistance level in the direction of a gap fill. We, were, we, uh, we simply used prior um, you know, our, our risk on these types of scalps is about two points anyway. But prior highs being at a 1764 made it, uh, you know, perfect two points is one tick above that high. Um, and that was a high from uh, Thursday. And, uh, and of course, um, our downside target was the 1756 gap fill, which we front run by two ticks. Remember, the S&P trades with a quarter tick, so uh, the ES does. So we front ran it by with a 1756 quarter uh, primary target. And we took half of the position off at our first target, which was at plus two points at the uh, 60 quarters. So the trade almost, uh, not immediately, but got free very quickly. Um, you know, within about 10 minutes of taking the trade, we were free. And then the rest of the trade was just letting it ride with either a break even stop or targets hit. And sure enough, targets were hit. Gap fill trade at a 17.56 exactly. And that has been the support all morning. Um, it traded. Uh, in a low tick at 10 a.m. Um, and then uh, we've we've rallied since then. So although this says bearish divergence, the low in the tick for the day is actually the low for the day for trading hours. Uh, we did go one tick under, but uh, we've snapped back and rallied then ever since. So we kind of negate this bearish divergence for the time being. Um, it's going to be really hard for if the S&P starts to rally. It's going to be really hard for the S&P to start um, to if it does start bullish divergence, it's going to be really hard to break that bullish divergence because the buying that was so strong this morning, um, 
you know, would likely see a lot of selling on the way up and thus keeping the tick below its 1300 highs for the day. Almost 1400. All right. Um, so nice little trade, a quick trade this morning. Uh, about the only scalp worthwhile taking I saw. And, uh, you know, that's what it is. So, all right, let's begin with the, S, uh, the dollar yen. Uh, dollar yen is uh, still kind of flagging sideways. This is very reminiscent now. Actually, starting to feel more like this pullback. Either way, um, we're clearly still making higher highs and uh, higher lows um, on our daily. Uh, we did squeak out a minor new high, which doesn't really count for our higher highs. The point being is that we definitely anticipate staying above the 97.80 lows from uh, last Friday. And uh, support now, <clears throat> if we don't continue to hold the 98.60s like we are, which could take us up to the 99 figure uh, from here, uh, we are anticipating support being at the 98.30 uh, area, uh, precisely 98.35 uh, support which would continue our rally higher. And um, again, once we start getting above 99, now we're in short covering uh, territory and there is not much resistance to one uh, to the 150, 160 area, which is where the prior, uh, prior highs actually are, okay? So again, uh, downside here, limited probably to the 98.35s. And uh, we do have, uh, we do have intraday signal out to buy that level. British pound is currently um, selling off from a Globex short. This is Friday's high to today's low. Um, traded up into the 59.76 that we talked about this morning. We've gotten a reaction from there. Definitely need to start paying attention, however, because we could see support at a 59.42. Um, I wouldn't be a buyer there because we are coming off the Globex short. So um, more importantly, um, two, uh, that we are finding support at prior support here. So unless this is going to make some larger triangle uh, of three wave correction down in a flat, we would need to see um, another push below this prior low at the 150. Um, I've marked it here at the 150, uh, really 895s. Um, but uh, could could turn bullish from there. Otherwise, this could be some kind of short term top, and we could get a pullback all the way into the 55. 40s if we do you know take a dive below 158 okay um, but certainly looking for at least one more minor low to complete a three wave um, flat off the highs the euro us dollar very similar uh, instead of a globex short it's a continuation of its extensions traded once twice now same anchor new low a third time here from the 3520 resistance um, <coughs> downside targets of the 13407 like I mentioned before, there is the very, I think, uh, small, but there is the potential for this 134.70 um, area to be a next in the series long that could take us up and into the 141 targets. Again, I am very hesitant of this type of support. I'd prefer to see a move all the way back down to the 133s, but I also wouldn't be surprised to see a rally into the 136.40 area and then um, the euro dollar turn back over. And then, you know, from there, really make equal legs down into the 133s where uh, there is the full halfway back long. Uh, that would also target the 141 uh, area. I think that's probably, if you're more of a swing trader, that's that's the area you're looking for here. Uh, but definitely a downside for the euro, US dollar remains in risk here, certainly in the short term, uh, if not in the medium term, after some kind of a relief rally in a, in a B, B wave before a sharp C down to that 133 area. Okay, uh, it would be a 132, I'd say uh, 132.90, 132.80 to be exact. But like I said, uh, while below 135.40, downside to a 134 figure, uh, the low 134 figure remains uh, intact. The Aussie US dollar being a little more difficult. Uh, I'm definitely glad we held off on the scalp short because uh, we would have been stopped. Uh, this is why I wanted to see us below 94.80 before, um, 94.85 before really taking um, taking a stab at being a seller. Um, and I definitely would still, uh, but I would want to see this, this break. Um, there's an extension now that we've uh, been able to identify from this original short level off this high. Um, Again, this this is looking choppy and, and could be still a running flat if we remain below this one uh, this 9520 area. It's actually kind of bearish, um, 
and uh, a 9380 would be the downside target from about this area. Um, I would, again, kind of not be surprised to see a push up to the 9540s or even uh, as high as a 9590 uh, here in the full short. Um, as I do not, uh, I do not identify any major support level uh, that could be holding from here. Um, all I see is the, the need and the potential for a full pullback into the 93 figure. So any rally here is likely a B wave rally um, that is going to get faded uh, down for another leg down into 93. It's very similar to the euro here. You know, kind of short term downside remains in play. A relief rally is definitely could be in the works because everything off the highs here see, it still seems corrective in nature. And um, <clears throat> While you know you can see justify the euro or the Aussie as five down, five down doesn't mean the start of an impulse down. It could be the A wave. It could be uh, any number of counts. So, like I said, um, re um, I wouldn't be a buyer. I don't see the, the 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 setup to to jump in on this for a move higher. But there's nothing that says we couldn't trade up into the 96 figure before rolling back over down to 93s, just like the euro. It's a very similar structure or potential. Euro Aussie, um, also holding a Globex short here, a bit of a front run of one, but it's just today's high to low. Uh, the 142.40 resistance level remains intact, and that continues our trend down off of these highs. So, um, you know, if we do go above a 142.60, could look for the rally up to 143.60. Uh, I'm sorry, 142.60 could see 100 pips higher to 143.60 before more downside. But ultimately, we are coming up and off of this 141 figure, which is a major support level for the Euro Aussie. Um, so while those lows remain intact, we could still be in a larger correction or a the start of a move up to the 154s. I do want to see us, you know, I'd like to see the 141 actually trade. And uh, it would be very likely that the Euro Aussie could get choppy and sideways, maybe even start a larger, more uh, more um, more complex correction while the euro and the Aussie uh, against the US dollar kind of figure themselves out uh, in, in their corrective mode coming back so um, nothing to do here um, I had the you know there were great longs prior but nothing's nothing's available for trading right now um, just does not uh, does not fit my um, my MO for what I look for in a market to position for a swing. Gold uh, continues a you know kind of a mild pullback again. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens at the 1314s. Do not be shocked if we do get a retest of the uh, 1306s. Gold is notorious for this type of price action, um, but uh, again, could have the start of a rally higher. Um, you know, while the 1364 remains intact. Downside, unfortunately, there are technically downside targets for shorts down at the 1207s, but the longs uh, have technical upside targets of the 1390, um, uh, while they remind, remain above 1290 as well. So, um, very mixed signals from gold. We've this gold has been like this actually for the last few months. Uh, has not had a clear discernible trend outside of you know 15 minute time frames. So you know in the daily and hourly, um, it's been very sideways and. Um, it's clearly apparent that the trend has, you know, neither side has been able to take over and uh, really um, drive their trend home. And you can see that very clearly in price action. It's been a sideways market. It's been a tough trade. But uh, if you're keeping it small, keeping it tight, keeping profit objectives, you know, inside of these ranges, it, it is a great instrument to trade right now because below the 15 minute time frame and below is remaining technical. So uh, keep that in mind. But uh, no trades, no real great ideas that I see or anything worthwhile here. Last uh, but not least here, I'm going to skip the euro uh, yen today. Nothing really there. But the Aussie yen, we do have technically an extension long holding from the 9340 uh, high. Uh, this extension would be the um, second in a series. So it traded once to target, same anchor new high. Uh, we talked about this this morning. The 9360 got a bounce. Uh, so technically upside targets at the 90, uh, almost the 94 figure in the near term. Um, this is unfortunately a three equal legs. Whoops. This is unfortunately three equal legs back. Um, I don't have a resistance zone until the 94 twenties uh, there, and I have no real interest in being a seller um, um, of the um, 
no interest of being a seller in the Aussie yen. I'd rather be a buyer in the much larger pullback, potentially down to 91s. Um, so if we do break shorts, you know, we can make a case for another another pullback here. But um, it's going to be a question for the Aussie US dollar of if we do rally because there is a 93.20 long that is still valid here on the Aussie yen. If both the Aussie yen and the dollar yen rally, the Aussie dollar will be 100% a function of which one is rallying further and faster. If the dollar yen rallies further than the Aussie yen, Aussie US dollar will fall. If the Aussie yen rallies uh, and outpaces the dollar yen to the upside, uh, the Aussie yen or Aussie dollar will, of course, rally itself. So. Um, Nevertheless, 15-minute time frame, uh, have a valid long well above the 93.55s and an upside target of the 93.96s here in the near term. Um, again, like I mentioned, uh, this is at equal legs territory up off of lows, so it is still just three legs up. And uh, this could be the uh, you know fourth wave and complete fifth of C if we do uh, if it does make it up there. Um, who knows, maybe it, it will rally straight up in the 9420s, then roll over. Um, we'll see. Um, I, I'd be cautious, and actually I want to put this short on as a watch, because it, it's definitely not a level I would take, um, because I do see the potential, or not the potential, I do see the 618 lines and the 50% long uh, having already traded. Uh, give this a second to load. There it is. Um, this full long here, this swing long right here having already traded with technically a 90, about a 97 upside target. All right, everybody. Um, hope you've enjoyed uh, today and uh, the uh, trading room. Again, um, that uh, we, took, we were able to take that uh, S&P short in real time. Um, you know, just in the near term here, it looks like there might be a micro short having just traded at the 95 or 59.50s. But uh, anyway, most importantly, um, it was a nice little gap trade. I hope you guys all saw how and why I went through that trade and why that was a you know take this morning. Uh, there'll be a lot more where those came from, and uh, you know expect expect uh, having this week being a little news weighted towards the end with NFP and everything. Expect market price action and trading to certainly pick up into the end of the week as we uh, you know kind of just adjust for you know this is still the start of November and we are adjusting into uh, you know the next week of trading going into a pretty heavy news week. Um, heads up on Aussie news tonight. Uh, certainly going to be a market mover. They have the equivalent of their FOMC tonight, uh, their rate decision. And uh, with that being said, have a great day, everybody. And we'll be back with you as price action develops.